The House will come to order. Messages from the Senate. Oh, I did the whole thing. <clears throat> Message from the Senate, Madam Speaker. I hereby announce the passage by the Senate of the following Senate file, herewith transmitted. Senate file number seven. And the message is signed, Cal R. Ludeman, Secretary of the Senate. First reading of Senate files. First reading. First reading of Senate files. First reading of Senate file number seven, an act relating to state government, appropriating money for environment and natural resources. <clears throat> Pursuant to Article 4, Section 19 of the Constitution of the State of Minnesota, Winkler moves that the rule therein be suspended and an urgency be declared and that the rules of the House be so far suspended so that Senate File No. 7 be given its second and third readings and be placed upon its final passage. Representative Winkler. Uh, Madam Speaker, members, this is the motion to take up the Environment Bill tonight. I ask for a yes vote. Representative New. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Members, I would urge a yes vote on suspending the rules. Representative Driskowski. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Yes, it is. All those in favor of the Winkler motion, please say aye. aye. Those opposed, please say no. The motion prevails. Uh, the clerk will give the bill. Sorry. Second it's reading. second reading. Second reading, Senate file number seven. Second reading. There are no amendments at the desk. The clerk will give the bill its third reading. Third reading, Senate file number seven. Third reading. I haven't slept a lot in the last week. I recognize the member from Ramsey, Representative Hansen, to describe your bill. The member from Dakota, Madam Speaker. I'm sorry, I didn't hear that. The member from Dakota. Dakota. There were people sitting in front of your county. I'm so sorry. The member from Dakota, Representative Hansen. Thank you, Madam Speaker and members. When uh, this bill uh, left the floor of the House, I emphasized that it had three things in it, uh, chronic waste and disease, CWD, emerald ash borer, EAB, and aquatic invasive species prevention efforts, AIS. And the bill in front of you also has CWD, EAB, and AIS does them a little differently. Uh, we have a good compromise on chronic waste and disease. Uh, on Emerald Ash Borer, there is funding for grants for local governments. And for AIS, we provide additional money for research and also for the DNR to provi provide grants uh, to lake associations uh, for combating aquatic invasive species. We had several meetings and several public uh, votes on policy. Uh, the House and the Senate agreed on some policy, but there was a lot of policy in both the House and the Senate that the conference committee did not uh, agree on. The bill that's in front of you is uh, a product of, I believe, a good working relationship uh, that we had between the House and the Senate. I found working with Senator Ingebrigtsen to be an honorable experience. Uh, I want to thank the members of the conference committee and the staff and all the folks that were there, and we had extensive uh, public testimony in the conference committee and then yesterday all also a very uh, detailed walkthrough. Uh, since the walkthrough yesterday, there are some technical corrections that were made uh, to the bill. I assure you they are technical. If you would like me to go through uh, details on those, I could. But other than that, I ask for your support for the Environment Finance uh, Committee. Discussion to Senate file number seven. Any discussion to the bill? Seeing, oh, Representative Miller. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Sorry to disappoint everyone. <laughs> I'm, so, I'm a disappointment. So, um, Madam Speaker and members, I just want to speak to one element in this, um, and this has to do with the farm survey day. On agriculture, we had a great deal of talk about this. I was not an environment committee. I'm sure that they had a lot of talk in there too. Um, and I do appreciate that throughout the session there has been an effort to reach out to survey day farmers. That was a huge accomplishment because at first this was being kind of rammed down their throat. And, uh, and I do appreciate that they're listening to them, but I still believe that this bill includes and addresses at best half of the problem, and we don't even know where the total problem is, but this does not address the wild survey day. This only goes after the farm survey day, and there's a couple things that I'm kind of concerned about on this bill. Uh, first of all, uh, 
if you are watching and you farm survey day, you have a tax increase coming. There's fees that are coming that are going to make you pay for some of these things. I don't think that that's right. Um, I also, somewhere, I've, I'm not bringing it up real quick on my bill here. I was expecting some other people to be speaking here. But there is, uh, if a farm is found, members, if a farm is found to have um, chronic wasting disease, they have to complete, thank you, they have to completely depopulate and then uh, keep the fencing up for five years. And I'm assuming it wasn't real clear from what I could see, but they have to keep it empty for five years. So that's a piece of property that's empty. And then they have to put biohazard signs all around in the area. And when I was in agriculture committee, I'd say, well, everything that we have here in Farm Survey Day, we should be able to do for Wild Survey Day. But of course, you can't fence in Wild Survey Day. You can't depopulate. Well, certainly, maybe we could put biohazard signs up when there is found to be survey day problems uh, in the wild, which of course that isn't in here. Members, this is going after an industry in my opinion, not based on science. I don't think this can be supported. And again, while it's been softened up quite a bit, I do think it's a foot in the door for what's gonna be going after farmers even more. And I think that what we need to do first is to identify where the problems are in the wild and in the farm. You have very compliant farmers who wanna do things right but I'm not seeing us do anything in the wild other than um, the dumpsters, which I'm not even sure how well that is all going to work. Uh, but members, this is, this is uh, not a good portion of this bill. I'm really disappointed to see that this is still in here and I will not be supporting this bill. Thank you. The member from Dakota, Representative Garofalo. Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker. Would the author yield for a quick question? He will yield. Representative Garofalo. Thank you. Madam Speaker, Representative Hansen, first of all, thank you for your work on this and uh, managing this conference committee. Can you tell the body how much the cumulative amount of revenue for the upcoming biennium uh, is contained in this bill? Representative Hansen. Madam Speaker, I could, uh, Representative Garofalo, I couldn't hear you at the end what you, what you said. Um, Madam Speaker, Representative Garofalo. Madam Speaker, Representative Hansen, what is the cumulative amount of revenue that is in this bill? So how much is the, we see a target in here for, of net spending, but that is the number after uh, revenue has been subtracted from it, so the gross spending is a higher amount. What is the amount of revenue that's in this bill? Representative Hansen. Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker. And so, uh, Representative Garofalo, the net, uh, are they, Amount of general fund increase is 13 uh, million above base. There are two fees that uh, there are three fees that are raised in here. There is the cross country ski pass. There is the aquatic invasive species uh, surcharge, which is going from five dollars to 10.6 dollars uh, over a three year period. And then uh, on the uh, Board of Animal Health Farm Survey Day, there are two fees. One is uh, uh, for the, those that have uh, more of a commercial shooting range, that's 500, and uh, the smaller ones are 250. And we're rapidly looking at the uh, spreadsheet to find those amounts, but those are the actual uh, fee increases that are in there. Representative Garofalo. Thank you, Madam Speaker. If Representative Hansen would yield for a quick question. He will yield. Representative Garofalo. Thank you, Madam Speaker. And Representative Hansen, am I correct in saying that lines 355 of the spreadsheet through 4007, that those would be uh, the areas where members of the body could see uh, in the revisor section what the amount of revenue would be? Or is there revenue in other parts of the spreadsheet? Representative Hansen. Thank you, uh, Madam Speaker and uh, Representative Garofalo. If you look at, there are all the, on the lines of the spreadsheet, there's proposals that were either in our bill or were in the governor's budget that are listed but are not included. So if you, if you look at the spreadsheet, um, where there are the positive figures, you will see uh, amounts that are carried in the spreadsheet. And uh, I'm trying to read them with my glasses right now. Um, so you have, uh, you also look at, uh, so look on uh, line 377, the cross country ski pass. That shows that brings in 70 a year, 140 total. Um, there are things like free park days. 
that we're in and actually our cost. Uh, and then uh, what is happening on the deer license revenue, it's rededicating amounts within the revenue. Uh, so there's not a increase on the deer license, but what it's doing is uh, collecting those dollars that are in there. And Matt. I think he's not done yet. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, and then you have some cancellations. Uh, reimbursing the general fund transfers from the water rec account to the invasive species account. Representative Garofalo. Thank you, Madam Speaker and Representative Hansen. Yes, um, I'm just, I wanted to make sure I wasn't missing something in the spreadsheet. I was looking for a row that showed the total amount of revenue cumulatively added up all those things were, but that's okay. Um, members, as you look on your spreadsheet, you'll see the net general fund impact for this is $338 million above base. Yeah, no, that's what the number is, 338, uh, which is actually, uh, even with the revenue, I believe is less spending than the previous biennium, so uh, it is less spending than the uh, previous one. However, there are objectionable policy items and revenue considerations in this bill, and for that reason and others, I would recommend a no vote on this bill. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Any further discussion to Senate File 7? Representative O'Neill. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Members, would Representative Hansen yield for a question? Madam Speaker, would Representative Hansen He will yield, yield. Representative O'Neill. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Representative Hansen, uh, could you explain to the body and uh, the public sort of the process your committee, uh, your conference committee went through, and did you have to go in front of the leadership tribunal, and if so, what happened there? Representative Hansen. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, Representative O'Neill, so we began meeting probably over two weeks ago, uh, began working, uh, we uh, quickly adopted the lands bill provisions uh, that had been uh, passed uh, out of this body and that or had, had been on the general register in this body and were passed in the Senate. We also uh, adopted a provision that was in both bodies that was worked out uh, and voted on in the committee between Representative Fisher and Senator Johnson relating to clean water legacy. Uh, that was technical work that actually was worked on last year as well, so there was a compromise between the House and the Senate, and that was voted on in the committee. Uh, there were also, uh, I believe, three other meetings with motions uh, adopting policy provisions uh, prior to, uh, and Representative O'Neill, I might get a little fuzzy here on the days, uh, but it, uh, prior to Monday at 5 o'clock, the last policy items uh, which were based on offers going back to the House and the Senate were adopted at 4.59 p.m. on Monday afternoon. At 6.30 p.m. on Monday evening, uh, I and Senator Ingebrigtsen met with the governor, uh, the governor's staff, lieutenant governor, the um, speaker of the House and the Senate majority leader and their staff. And we had five minutes, uh, so the Senate presented five minutes, uh, the House presented five minutes, and the executive agencies presented five minutes on some sticking points and just describing uh, what were in their bills. Uh, and I found that to be, having never been through the conference committee, it was a very invigorating process. I found that the executive, the speaker, and the Senate majority leader asked a lot of questions about it. We had to be able to answer those questions, uh, and we did. So it took about 15 minutes for the presentations, about 15 minutes uh, for answering the questions, and then we were done. And following that, uh, we worked with, uh, in the House and the executive branch agencies, and this is primarily the Department of Natural Resources, the Minnesota Pollution Control Agency, and the Board of Water and Soil Resources, worked together to develop a joint budget proposal and an LCCMR proposal. Uh, and the Senate worked on preparing a proposal as well. Those were exchanged about 10 p.m. on Monday evening uh, and were not resolved. So then we followed up and went back to the table and uh, Representative O'Neill, you can find uh, what happened on my Twitter feed. I posted the, uh, the agreement that, that we were provided uh, on the big items uh, f at about 9.30 or 8.30, I might be a little fuzzy on that too, on Tuesday evening. And following that, 
then uh, Senator Ingebrigtsen and I worked on resolving our differences with the uh, Commissioner of Department of Natural Resources, Sarah Stroman, and the Commissioner of Pollution Control Agency, Laura Bishop, and we were given a target to be done at 10 o'clock. We hit that about 11. It actually took about another hour to get the spreadsheet done. We signed that agreement. Senator Ingebrigtsen was not in the room at the moment because he was on the phone, so it had to be brought over. I signed it. This, uh, Sarah Stroman signed it, and Laura Bishop signed it, and it was brought over to Senator Gazelka to sign that on behalf of the Senate, and that was the agreement. And then the nonpartisan staff, as they always do, work when we're not here to work very hard, and I want to especially thank Brad Hagemeyer and Janelle Taylor for working very, very hard throughout this process to provide the information that's available in front of you right now and has been available for the public and was go and they went through the, con the hearing yesterday afternoon in great detail with very little sleep. So I want to thank them again publicly and that, Representative O'Neill, is what happened in our conference committee. Representative O'Neill. Thank you, Madam Speaker and members, and thank you, Representative Hansen. Uh, so if I'm understanding this correctly, it sounds like the vast majority of the budget was decided by the tribunal, or maybe correct me if, if I'm wrong, but maybe you could talk about some of the major sticking points, as you say, and what those policy pieces were. And I only ask because we couldn't be in the room, the public wasn't in the room, the press wasn't in the room, and this was supposed to be the most transparent process that we've ever seen in how many years, and it was probably the least. And so if you could just let the public know and let us know what the major sticking points were and like actually how much of the budget was decided by the tribunal as opposed to in the open committee, conference committee process. Representative Hansen. Well, Representative O'Neill, I would uh, ask you again to look at my Twitter feed and you will see that the uh, uh, governor the Speaker of the House and the Senate Majority Leader allocated $5 million from the LCCMR the following ways uh, to a Masabi Trail, $1 million, forest and bio research, $2.2 million, a managed aquifer recharge study, $350,000, uh, Senator Westrom's uh, robotic, I think it's solar robots, $900,000, and then a native bee survey of $600,000. And that was initialed uh, by each of those three. Uh, it says that the, uh, this is again what the three, Governor, Speaker of the House, and the majority decided, must include 150,000 for Lake Elysian and Roberts Storm cleanup, Roberts Lake, uh, Representative Lippert, Roberts Lake. Uh, and then the bill will include the following policy. Policy language already adopted by the conference committee with open votes. The St. Croix River Trail between Wild River State Park and William O'Brien State Park and facilities will be designated and named the Walter F. Mondale Scenic Riverway. Uh, inclusion of enhanced debarment authority and wildfire fighter uh, exemption. And then the fact that the LCCMR would uh, follow the current biennium recommendations and include 1.8 million for chronic waste and disease, which is what we had had before. The AIS surcharge, which was already posted in the global agreement of $10.60, no water rec fee increase, no solid waste fee increase. That is what the three decided. A very, very, very small amount of the budget. Representative O'Neill. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you, Representative Hansen. Well, I appreciate that detail and you know, I don't know how many of the 5.5 million folks in Minnesota follow you on Twitter, but um, that's nice that you put some things on Twitter, I suppose. But it's really important for the state of Minnesota to be able to know what's happening. And this whole process began at the beginning of this session talking about how transparent this was going to be. We were going to do this differently. There weren't going to be three people in a room deciding everything, and, and it's been everything but that. So I appreciate you detailing exactly what happened in your conference committee. Um, uh, if you would yield for one last question, I have a question about um, the Walter Mondale Park Trail, whatever we ended up with. He will yield. Representative O'Neill. 
Thank you, Madam Speaker. So could you just explain to us uh, who made that decision and how that came to be to name something after someone who is still alive when we have clearly in statute that we as a legislature are not to do that? And I understand you said not withholding. So we've exempted ourselves, the legislature, from naming something after someone who's still alive. But can you explain to us how that process happened and was there, were there public hearings? Uh, you know, I know that this was quite an uproar in some of the districts where um, this consideration were, were tried in different parks and so on. And so can you just uh, let the body know and let the public know how did we arrive at where we are now and why are we exempting ourselves, the legislature, and naming a park or trail or whatever it is we ended up with after someone who is still alive when clearly our statute says we are not to do that? Representative Hansen. Thank you, uh, Madam Speaker and Representative O'Neill. Well, there's precedent, uh, and all you have to do is turn back uh, a few hours to when Representative Lilly was presenting the results from the Lassard Sam's Outdoor Heritage Council. Uh, former Senator Lassard is still alive and has a uh, something named after him and has for 10 years. So the precedent has been there for naming something off of after someone who is living. Precedent's there, seal's broke. That's uh, one thing. In addition, uh, as you know, this proposal has ad adapted throughout the process and that naming the water park has been agreed as a good uh, solution to honor former representative, former senator, former vice president, Walter F. Mondale. So, as I mentioned before, in the sheet that I referenced, this decision on the final naming was done with the governor, the Speaker of the House, and the Senate Majority Leader. Representative O'Neill. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, well, Representative Hansen, you didn't actually answer the last question, and so if he would yield for one final question to rephrase that, maybe. He will yield. Representative O'Neill. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you, Representative Hansen. So uh, the question that I was most concerned about was, was there, were there public hearings in the area that you are now naming after Walter Mondale, and what was the input if you've had some public intercourt or uh, respondents, responses from them? Um, if you could just let us know what kind of public hearings or whatever uh, about this particular location for naming after Walter Mondale. Representative Hansen. Thank you, Madam Speaker. And uh, Representative O'Neill, there were hearings here. Uh, the most recent was yesterday, uh, committee hearings throughout the process on how to properly honor uh, former Vice President Mondale. If your question is there were there hearings in the area, uh, my committee did not have hearings in the area. Representative Winkler. Madam Speaker, uh, pursuant to Rule 1.50, I move that the House be allowed to meet past midnight. Representative Winkler moves that the House be allowed to meet past midnight. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those, oh, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Those opposed, please say no. No. The motion prevails. Any further discussion of Senate file number seven? The member from Brown, Representative Torkelson. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Would Representative Hansen yield for a question? He will yield. Representative Torkelson. Representative Hansen, uh, do you happen to have a flashlight in your desk? <laughs> Representative Hansen. Thank you, uh, Madam Speaker. Uh, Representative Torkelson, I actually did not bring a flashlight this year. I was ready to debate this bill when it came over from the Senate earlier this afternoon. Well, th Representative Torkelson. Thank you, Madam Speaker. If President Hansen will yield for another question. He will yield to another question. Uh, Representative thank Torkelson. Thank you, Mr. S Madam Speaker. Uh, Representative Hansen, uh, what time of the day did you meet with the tribunal? Representative Hansen. Thank you, uh, Madam Speaker. Uh, I think I mentioned that. Maybe you weren't uh, hearing. I said 6.30 p.m., uh, which is in the daylight, uh, 6.30 p.m. on Monday. Representative Torkelson. Madam Speaker, if Representative Hansen would yield for another question. He will yield. Representative Torkelson. Well, it may not have been, uh, well, first, before I make my comments, uh, Representative Hansen uh, was at the only meeting with the tribunal, 
And was it a public meeting, Representative Hansen? Representative Hansen. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, Representative Torkelson, that was my only meeting with the governor and the Speaker of the House and the Majority Leader, and it was not a public meeting. Representative Torkelson. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Representative Hansen, uh, what time of the day did you close up your bill? Representative Hansen. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, Representative Torkelson, um, so there's different parts of the bill. So the policy provisions in the bill were closed at 4.59 uh, p.m. on Monday that were in our conference committee. The lottery provisions were closed on Tuesday evening, uh, and the budget provisions were closed on Tuesday evening. Representative in, Torkelson. And oh, in Representative dark, Hansen's not in finished. Representative Hansen. Uh, and well, they were in the dark of night. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, Success. Madam Speaker. Success. Representative Torkelson. Thank you, Madam Speaker, and thank you, Representative Hansen. I knew I would get a confession if I quizzed you long enough. It's uh, these TV lights. We'll confess anything under these lights. Representative Torkelson. Well, maybe we should turn them up a little <laughs> higher then. <laughs> uh, she didn't see me uh, anyway. Uh, thank you, Representative Hansen. I was just recalling uh, our uh, dialogues from last year and just felt it would be kind of fun to be on the other side of the conversation. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Any further discussion on Senate file number seven? Seeing none, the clerk will take the roll on the bill. The clerk will close the roll. There being 84 ayes and 43 nays, the bill is passed and its title agreed to. Representative Winkler. Madam Speaker, I move a recess to the call of the chair. Representative Winkler moves a recess to the call of the chair. All those in favor? Please say aye. aye. Those opposed, please say no. 
The motion prevails. The House is in recess.